what I actually really loved about Tombow and what got me started on Tombow was that I needed something that I could pick up and put down in the drop of a hat. Hey, I'm Becca with the Happy Ever Crafter, and this week I have Grace of Grace and Studio on here, and Grace is also on the Tombow design team. So I asked Grace to come on and answer my top five Tombow questions, including like how to store your pens, how to make sure you don't fray them, and all the good juicy questions like that. So Grace walks us through all of those and also walks us through a ton of other unexpected kind of little mini tutorials, and it ends up being sort of like a Tombow masterclass. So I really hope you enjoy this episode. Let's jump right in. Grace, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks Becca. I'm so glad to be here. So I, um, I reached out because I know you're on the Tombow design team and I am going to yeah. ask you more about what that means in a second, but okay. I really wanted to do, I've been really wanting to do an episode with Tombow because mm -hmm. so many people use Tombow pens. If anybody's watching this and doesn't know what Tombow is, it's like what rock <laughs> you've been living under. But um, <laughs> there's also just like so many Tombow specific questions that I get mm -hmm. all the time. And like, I don't work for Tombow. I use Tombow, but I'm not like a, uh -huh. you know, I'm not a pro. And so I don't know, like things like how to store them, how to make them not fray and like all these things that people tend to panic about. And so I'm really excited to get into that. But before we do, can you give us a little rundown of like who you are, what you do, and, uh, and that kind of stuff? Absolutely. So I'm Grace from Grace Ann Studio. I've been on the Tombow design team. This is my second year. And it's really been wonderful. But besides being on the design team, I, um, I'm a mom, I live mom and wife, I live in uh, North Texas, just north of Dallas. And I've had my own little mini Etsy shop for about, oh gosh, 2016, so four years now. Um, and I started hand lettering in 2016 because I really needed something outside of motherhood and <laughs> had been, um, I mean, I've always been an artist from the time I could hold a pencil, you know, I've just always been really into art and drawing and everything. And so lettering seems like a fun and easy way to get into that in motherhood. And um, what I actually really loved about Tombow and what got me started on Tombow was that I needed something that I could pick up and put down in the drop of a hat because, you know, with oil painting and watercolor and acrylics, like there's so much setup and cleanup time. I don't have that anymore. I mean, you know, it's okay. Baby's napping for 30 minutes. <laughs> Let's see what I can do. So um, using all of the pens and markers and calligraphy and now with the ABT pro that really lets me to, um, maximize my creative time, which has been really wonderful. So um, through that, I applied and made the Tombow design team. Uh, last year was my first year, and this is my second year. Well, I'm glad that that's what you finished with, because that was my next question was like, oh, good. can you explain a little bit about what it means to be on the Tombow design team? Like, I feel like it sounds so glamorous, and I just want to know. Exactly I know, what it means. right? I, I still kind of pinch myself that I'm on it, because it's Tombow, right? <laughs> like, um, basically it's a group of, um, it happens to be all ladies. It doesn't have to be ladies, but it's a group of women that are, um, contractors essentially for Tombow and we create blog posts and Instagram posts using their products. So one of the perks is that they send you all of these amazing products whenever you need some, and then you, um, help to educate and inspire people to create their best work, which is, you know, Tombow's little logo, but or not logo, excuse me, uh, Tombo's, Tag whatever line? the word I'm looking for is. Yes, Tag that's line, the yeah. one. <laughs> Tagline. <laughs> um, so really, we're just there to educate people and use their products. And But I mean, what we actually produce is we do um, artwork for them. We do Instagram posts, blog posts, and then there's usually um, some extra products or extra projects that are thrown in there every month for us to work on as well. The whole, like you were saying that you're job basically is educating and inspiring yeah. people with Tombow products. And so like you are yeah. absolutely the perfect person to have on because like I said, <laughs> I get Tombow specific questions all the time and yeah. uh, what better opportunity than with you to just like pepper you with questions about all of it. So, uh, Bring it. I, I'm ready. <laughs> so for the audience to just know, I've already sent you a list of my top five questions that I want you to answer. And so I think that like, because you're going to want to put your 
camera on your hands. Like I'll just take myself yeah. off here and you already have the question. Okay. So I'll let you run with it. Cool. And then if I feel like All I right. need to interrupt or anything, I'll jump in. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. All right. So the first question that Becca sent me was how are you yeah. supposed to store your Tombow pens? Um, and I kind of love this question because I love organizing. <laughs> so I've got a lot of options that just, I kind of came up with and also Tombow sells some products that um, help you organize your pens as well. But also because storing your Tombow pens correctly will really help to extend the life of them. Um, but I'll get to that in just a second. For now, let's take a look at all of my storage behind me and then we'll go over to my desk and check out all the Tombow stuff. Okay, so this is probably my favorite and most unique storage. Um, I use an old vintage Coke crate that I actually got from my grandmother and it stores all of my dual brush pens and my ABT Pro pens. So one of the main questions that I get and obviously Becca gets as well is should you store them horizontally or vertically? Now for the dual brush pens, they can be stored either way. Um, so you can store them vertically or horizontally. For me, I like to store all of my colors together because, again, it makes cleanup a lot easier um, than having to find the exact right little hole to put them in all the time. Um, but for the ABT Pro, the alcohol-based markers, you do have to store them horizontally, right? You can't store them up like this. And the reason for that is because the alcohol-based ink in all alcohol markers will evaporate if it's stored vertically. So you have to store them horizontally to really extend the life of your pens. Other than that, really, you don't have to have anything fancy. <laughs> I've got just some things from, you know, Target, because who doesn't go to Target if you've got one near you, or um, just cute little buckets or little pins or anything like that all works too. But okay, now I'm Grace, I have over. a question. Yes. Um, so what about the, actually, this is going to be two questions in one. How okay. do you pronounce the small black tip uh, pen yes. that everybody loves? Yes. Um, so the small black tip pen is the Funosuke. Okay. Fudenosuke. I, I always <laughs> said Fudenosuke, but close enough. Um, yeah. That I'm like proud of myself for getting most of it right. But okay, Absolutely. That, the second question was, uh -huh. how, what about storing those? Do you have to store those vertically or horizontally? You can store them either way. I store them vertically, um, but I've seen displays at the Tombow headquarters that stores them kind of like this as well. So yes, either way for those also. Okay, good to know. So Tombow also sells uh, products that are specifically for storing all of their pens. The one that I've been aware of the longest is the desk stand. And this comes with the, um, the old 96 pack before they came out with all their new colors. So it has 96 spots and it fits dual brush pens, the Food No Sukis, the Twin Toads, um, pretty much all of their pens except for the ABT Pro right, which you would not want to store them in this anyway, because um, that would mean they were stored vertically and not horizontally, but because they don't fit because the, um, the cap is a little bit different on the ABT Pro than the dual brush pens. So this one, it comes apart. So if you ever needed to take it apart for anything, you could, and then you just kind of put it together. And I actually have one that's all filled. So this is what I store all of my Twin Tones, my Fudenosuke colors, my Mono Edge highlighters, and then occasionally some dual brush pens. Really, this is just to show you that they fit, but I use this one and um, then my Coke Crate more for the, the dual brush pens. But um, as you can see, they all fit. They fit nicely and then they fit um, down into the little grooves at the bottom so that they all stay straight and don't kind of um, get mixed up real easily. So that is one option. I have a question about that. Well, yes. A question and a comment. The first one, okay. the comment is that I have that as well. Um, uh -huh. I don't have it with me because it's at my other studio, but um, uh -huh. 
one thing that I like realized really quickly is that I kept on, like I would pick it up and not pick it up by the bottom and then it would come apart and all the pens would fall out. So yes. uh, someone told me to just put like a little dab of hot glue in the corner. Oh, you're, like, that's a great idea. Yeah. So highly recommend that. It's, it's yes. life changing. Yeah, absolutely. When, <laughs> especially when you've spent a lot of time like organizing it all by color. <laughs> Uh, and yes. then it explodes and you have to do it again. And actually that's the next question was, yes. am I remembering correctly that there's a chart somewhere about like how to put them in order? How to, if you, if you do use all the dual mm -hmm. brushes in that? Yes. Split? Yeah. You know what? It's on the back of a blending palette. Yes. So they have them I all in order for you. Yep. I remember but sitting down and being like, how do I make this look really perfect because otherwise right. it's like it's like bothers my my obsessive tendencies yep I completely understand um also if you don't have this it's basically by number um so all the dual brush pens have three numbers on them um the first one is color the second one escapes my memory right now and the third one is the value or tone of it. So that's how they're organized on this chart. So zero is all of your yellows and yellowish greens, and then your ones are your greens, twos are kind of the blue green transition, twos and threes are that, fours and fives are blues, and then, you know, so on, so on. Um, so if you don't have this, it's just by number. That's all it's organized as. You'd think that I would have like noticed that trend when I was trying to put them on. <laughs> I really didn't. I just like tried to eyeball them all. Oh no. Well, and the, it's not, the cap colors are not what you would think because the first yeah. time that I organized it, I didn't organize it by the numbers. I tried just, you know, kind of eyeballing it based on the colors of the caps and it just never really worked out. And then I was like, oh, it's my number. There you go. That makes sense. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. All very good to know. Awesome. Okay, so the other one that Tombo has, or I should say the next one, because there's now three, yay, um, is the accordion case. And they came out with this one shortly after they came out with the new colors. Um, and I guess I should show this with the cap on too. Um, so it has this nice little handle that you can carry it around by and not have to only support the bottom, which is great. So the cap comes off and then you can either leave it like this or it splits out and is really, really long. <laughs> you could store it this way as well if you wanted these kind of like all the way across the back of your desk or something like that. Um, so I used to store all 108 of my pens in here, but um, like I said, I like to put them back in the exact order that they were in and <laughs> clean up was taking too long because I would get frustrated that I put it back in the wrong hole and just, it was just really frustrating for me. So I actually started using these to store the 10 packs and the 20 packs and keep all of those colors together. So I marked the side with washi tape. And so, so this one is my tropical, this one is my galaxy, this one's my landscape. And I've really enjoyed using this for that a lot, lot better. It's so just, smart. it's more functional that way. <laughs> Thank you. I, I Go ahead. I use that one for um, bringing to workshops too. But it's yes. the they always end up in like an annoying color pattern that drives me right. crazy. <laughs> right. So I've, I've just found myself redoing this way too many times. And I was like, okay, what else can I do? So that's when I switched to storing my full sets just by color and then just pick them out and put them back as I need them to. And then the 10 and 20 packs for this. So that's been really nice. Obviously there's some extra space, but when I need to, I fill that in with the N15s or the blacks because I have about 7 million of those. <laughs> um, so that's just always something I can tell what it is. But the one I'm really excited about is the new travel case that just came out uh, today, actually, on the day of recording. Um, so this is the new marker case. And uh, right now it is out in the VIP box in Oyster, but it, it, it'll be out soon in both the Oyster color and in black. And this one, um, it's, or they're both a faux leather um, cover, and then they have 54 loops inside. And the loops fit, let's see, 
the dual brush pens, the twin tones, mono drawing pens, mono uh, twin permanent marker, your food no sukis, and the ABT Pros. So they fit all of their markers and pencils as well. Um, and then they also have this mesh pocket for other things. I just have pins stuck in there right now, but you can put the adhesives in there, um, erasers, whatever else you have. And actually, um, somebody just showed me this today. If it's a notebook too, if you don't have too much stuff in there, it, like if maybe you're not using the mesh pocket for anything, you could take one of your notebooks and stick it in there for on the go too, which is really, really nice. All right, and that is it for storage. So the next question is, how can I ensure my Tombow pens don't fray? Which is an amazing question, and I get it all the time too. Um, there are two things that make the biggest difference when um, you really wanna keep your the brush tip of your pen um, just as nice as possible for the longest amount of time. And the first one is paper choice. Um, and the second one is pen position. So we will get all into pen position here in just a second. But um, for now, for paper, both for the ABT Pro and for dual brush pens, you wanna use a smooth paper. But I know that Becca just put out a, um, a, a video on all of the details that you need for exact paper choices. So for the most part, just make sure you're choosing something that is really smooth. Regular copy paper is not smooth. <laughs> Actually find something that's um, really smooth so that your tips don't fray and the teeth on the paper doesn't kind of like grab it that real, um, the real fragile brush tips. Okay, so the next question is what is the difference between a small pen and a big pen? So the small pen um, being the food no suki and the large pen being the dual brush pen. Um, or the ABT Pro, but that's kind of its own animal, so we'll talk about that in a second. For now, the difference between the small and the big pen, um, the Food no Suki, the, first of all, the ink is different between the two of them. Um, so when you're using the Food no Suki, it has a water-based ink, but it's a pigment-based ink as opposed to a dyed ink. So when you're using it, it is water-based, but it, um, it can't be pushed around with water. So it's not completely permanent, but it's more permanent than the dual brush pens that can really um, be pushed around with water because of their dyed based ink. So that's the Funosuki. And then the dual brush pens, and actually also the Twin Tones, have a water-based ink that is dyed, or dye-based ink. So what that means, that as you're writing with them, you can come back in and add a little bit of water. And then you can really push that ink around. So you can use this for blending, you can use this to watercolor with, or um, really, I mean, there are just so many options for what to do with these dual brush pens whenever you add water. Um, but for the most part, that is the main difference between the ink of the two and the same thing with the twin tones. So the twin tones, these are primarily used um, for either monoline illustrations, adding uh, some embellishments to your lettering, um, or in the planning and journaling community, I see them used there a lot as well. So they're a, a dual tip pen as well, and that they have the fine tip, and then they have the broad tip. So the broad tip looks like this, and then the fine tip looks like this. It's really, really fine. Um, I actually use the fine tip a lot in my planner. Um, and the broad tip, I think I like this side more for um, lettering because you can blend the twin tones either with each other or you can use the, um, the colorless blender. But you see, you can kind of blend them. And then again, like the dual brush pens, they're self cleaning as well. So you just kind of have a scratch page and then brush that off. But you can blend the two colors together just like the dual brush pens you can blend them together to make new colors as well so that's that's the main difference between the twin tones the dual brush pens and um, the food of teeth so whenever i think of um like big pen versus small pen i usually mm -hmm. am talking more about like the um 
like the size of the lettering. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Absolutely. For sure. I actually just put out another video about that too. So I can link to that for people. Um, oh, perfect. But I think even just like what you just showed us on the page, you can see how much different the sizing of what you would do with the oh, yeah, for sure. the smaller pen is. And I think just like the main thing for people to remember is that if you're trying to do really small lettering with a big, big flexible brush pen, it's going to be really challenging. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. So that, that is me not even pushing completely down on the dual brush pen, but you can really get huge lettering with those versus the, um, the really small lettering, like you said, with the food no So, yeah. yeah. I actually didn't talk about the hard um, versus soft tip food no suke. If you could talk oh, about that, sure. that'd be awesome. I should yeah, have put absolutely. that on my list of five questions, yeah. but it wasn't even on there. A huge question that I always get from beginner letterers is which pen should I start with? So um, I like to suggest people start with the hard tip just because um, it obviously is harder, <laughs> right? So it has less flex and it allows you a little bit more control whenever you're lettering. But if your lines are shaky, it kind of helps to even that out a little bit versus with the soft tip, you get a little bit of a thicker line. Um, or a thicker downstroke because it is softer, so so the tip flexes more um, at that angle. But um, for the most part, you also get really really thin upstrokes and the nice thick downstrokes. But for the most part, obviously, it's just the amount of flex that you have. If that and I feel sense. like a lot of people just, they imagine that the difference between the hard one and the soft one is like really a really big difference. And it's really not that noticeable unless you've tried both back to back. Like if you gave Absolutely. me one one day and the other another day, I, I probably wouldn't notice that much. Absolutely. It's not a significant difference. It's not like, say, jumping up to the dual brush pen, which has a huge amount of flex. I mean, the nib is still really small, right? The brush tip is still really small. So even though there's more flex with the soft tip, it's, um, it's not as noticeable, like you said, unless you're, you're um, going back to back. Yeah, cool. Okay, I think that's Very the good. last time I need to interrupt you on that. <laughs> it's all good. The next question we have is how do you use a brush pen? Well, focusing just on lettering, I can show you how to hold it, but um, I'm assuming when the, you say brush pen, you're talking about the dual brush pen. Um, but for lettering, it would apply also to the food no sukis as well um, in just how you use the flexible brush tip. So I'm going to use. Um, one of my Docker notebooks to show this. So with the dual brush pens, the way that you use a brush tip marker for lettering is that you're going to apply pressure to it while you're writing to create light upstrokes and heavy downstrokes. So whenever your pen is moving up, you use very, very light pressure. And when your pen is moving down on the page, you're pressing down to um, apply a lot of pressure and create a thick upstroke. And one of the main ways you can get really nice and consistent um, upstrokes and downstrokes is to hold your pen properly. And again, this goes back to um, ensuring that your pens don't fray. If you hold them at the correct angle, at that 45 degree angle, as opposed to straight up and down like this, it's gonna help to use the side of the brush, um, the brush tip and to help the very tip of it to stay pointed in a nicer shape for a longer amount of time. So not only is your lettering better, it's better for the pen too. So we just did a little bit of lettering, but I'm just gonna go through a couple of ABCs. So for my A, I'm going to start over here in the corner with an upstroke, light pressure, and then I'm pressing down. And you can see I'm pressing down almost completely on, um, on that downstroke for the full length of the, um, of the dual brush pen. And then again, down for the second part of the letter. Okay. And then B, we're going to have up, light pressure, heavy pressure down. Um, I like to rotate my pen just because 
as you are using pressure and these pens can handle a lot of pressure so do not be afraid to press down hard on them um, but as you do it you'll notice that they kind of start to curve off to one side so if you kind of rotate it with every stroke it just helps to keep that um, the brush tip round and pointed for longer as well so up light pressure heavy pressure down and then as you're transitioning you're slowly lightening up that pressure and then one more letter up stroke light down stroke heavy and then lightening up that pressure on the curve okay so really it's all about pen position and then using just the very tip and letting just the very tip of the marker hit the page for your upstrokes and really pressing down hard. I mean, look at how much I'm pressing down. And these pens are totally fine. You know, they're made for that. They're flexible for a reason. Yeah, I think often people are afraid to push really hard on them. I get that all the time in the yeah. start. Like when I first put a pen in people's hands in workshops, they're really afraid uh -huh. to push on it. And then I point out to them that I'm using those same pens on a um what's it called flip chart like uh -huh. i'm writing giant on a flip chart. right so if i can write that big with those pens they can write that big on paper absolutely um and one of the things that i really like to show is the difference between holding it at a 45 degree angle and up like this in your upstrokes so you know when you're holding a pen pen position is so important um so your pen is going to be resting here in the crook of your hand rather than kind of up here on your knuckles like if you're just writing you kind of write straight up and down to the page and your hand is really squinched around around your pen and you're probably more writing right on top of it but you want to hold it a little bit further back make sure the base of your pen is in the um the crook of your hand and elongate your hand again that kind of helps helps you to control the ups and downs but so you see these nice ones with my hand nice and elongated and then there's this one that's just using the tip of it so you can see you don't get nearly as big. And also when it's bending, it's just the top half of my pen bending, right? It's not the full length of the brush tip. So that's really what's gonna damage your pen faster as well. The last question is actually, what is the difference between water-based markers and alcohol-based markers? So since I've got my notebook out for the dual brush pens or the water-based markers, we'll wrap up with that and then I'll pull out all things ABT Pro and that's just gonna be so much fun. Um, so for the dual brush pens, uh, the first thing is that obviously you can blend with them. That's what I did here. Um, this is actually created with five different colors and I used the colorless blender to blend them together. So I'm not going to do a full composition like that, but <laughs> I will, um, show you how to blend two colors together. So all you would do is just lay down some color then lay down another color. And you can either blend them directly with the pens or you can use a dual brush pen to kind of push them together and push the color around. Um, and one thing that you will notice is that paper choice makes a huge difference here as well. So you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but my paper is already starting to pill with these water-based pens, which that is one of the main differences between a water-based pen and the alcohol markers, is that when you blend and you layer the water-based pens, the paper's gonna start to pill, which, I mean, it's not a big deal, you just wait for it to dry and then brush it off, um, but that doesn't happen with the alcohol ink markers. That, um, you can layer and layer and layer the ink and it will not pill the paper. It'll definitely bleed through the paper eventually, <laughs> but um, it won't pill the paper. So that's, that's really, really neat. Um, so you can use a colorless blender just to blend those colors together and create a nice gradient or even mix the colors as well. Um, and then again, they're self-cleaning. So even if the tip of it kind of stains a color, I promise the color is gone. So you can see as I'm coloring, there's nothing left there. Um, Another option for blending with dual brush pens is actually tip to tip. I'm gonna do it with a blue because you'll really be able to tell with blue. Um, and again, these are self-cleaning. So as you write, I mean, that looks almost black, right? Like that would be really scary for me if <laughs> I didn't know they were self-cleaning, you know, that I had just ruined my precious dual brush pens. But as I write, you can see the colors blend and they make this nice purple. 
I can't just leave that on the page. Got to finish it. So as you write, the color starts to come off, and it's lasting a little bit longer just because I'm rotating my pen, so I'm getting a little bit of new color there every time. And then again, see, I'm just kind of scribbling on the page, and it's cleaning it right off. So another, actually, I'll leave that one out. Another way to use these is with the blending palette. Um, so this blending is direct to paper, and then this is called tip to tip. Then there's also the indirect blending, which you can color on the, um, the blending palette, or um, I've seen a lot of people use the plastic case that the dual brush pins come in. If you save that case, that makes a really great blending palette too. So, you know, it's that same hard plastic, so you can just color on that and use it. So you can either use these to mix completely new colors, or you can pick up a little bit of color on your pen and let it blend on the page. And again, I mean, yellow, that's such a scary color to get <laughs> a different um, colored pen on, right? But it's just, it's coming completely off. So those are your options for blending these pens with um, just the markers. But because they're water-based, you can also use the Tombow water brushes or just a paintbrush, if that's all you have, um, to watercolor with them as well. So, I mean, that creates a, a whole new level of um, creating and blending pens with these. So um, this is not a watercolor notebook, so I'm going to switch notebooks real quick. So we've got our blue and some pink. So to create watercolors, you would just take your water brush and squeeze a little bit on there. And then as you mix it, you can watercolor letter with those exact, or with that ink, which is neat. Or you can use it to mix your own colors. So say you only have, you know, some basic colors. Well, you can create as many colors as you wanted to just by mixing the ink on your, um, your palette. I think I'm most excited for this last question because I have some of the ABT Pro pens, but um, I haven't really experimented with them. And I'm, oh, I'm curious excited for, you. for like your explanation on what the difference is between these. And we touched on it a little bit, but I know you have some like more things you can say. All right. So I am getting out just some Bristol paper to work with for the ABT Pro. Um, and I'm also going to get out my handy dandy little sheet of craft paper that I use as my scratch paper and also to protect my surface underneath to keep, um, to protect it from any bleeds that might happen. I might be using them in conjunction with my mono drawing pen. And one thing that I do want to say about that is a big difference when you are looking at pairing your pens in um, different kinds of work is that for the ABT Pro or an alcohol-based marker, you want to use water-based um, pens with it versus the dual brush pens. You don't want to use water-based with water-based because this ink will smear the mono drawing pen. So when you're working with um, the dual brush pens, use your mono twin permanent marker to, um, you know, create any under drawings or anything that you want for that. But for the ABT Pro, since this is water-based and alcohol-based, they don't interact with each other or smear, smear one or the other. So you can create um, different layers with those two. So we're going to learn to blend and layer colors with our five pack. So the first thing about the ABT Pro is that, of course, it has the flexible brush tip that's made of the same um, material as the dual brush pens. But again, the ink is different. It's alcohol ink and not the water-based ink. But the other side, instead of having the bullet tip, which... I don't even think I showed you the bullet tip on the dual brush pen, but it has a bullet tip, um, which is really nice for like adding details or layering or mono, um, mono line lettering. But on the ABT Pro, there's the chisel tip. So 
I really enjoy using the chisel tip for creating a nice even wash of color and I use it in architectural illustrations a lot too. Um, the brush tip is really really nice for creating organic lines and also for really, really fine details. Um, like if you happen to be into stamping or anything like that, this brush tip can get really, really fine details. Um, in addition to just details and drawings, it can color really fine details in, in different pictures and stamps as well. To blend, obviously you can blend with either side. Uh, first, I'll just show you the chisel tip. So as you lay down color, the first thing that you'll notice is that um, you want to work really slow. You want to work a lot slower than you think you need to with the alcohol marker because it needs time for the alcohol to evaporate and just leave the color on the page. Um, and also, the more layers that you put down, the smoother that it's going to look. So work with a light touch and also with light layers because you can always make it darker, you can't always make it lighter. So I don't know if you could see that change, but you can see it already looks really smooth after just one layer. So you can add that. And then as the color dries, it turns out to be really, really smooth. You can also layer color with just what, or create gradients rather, with just one color. So you can see now that we've let it dry a little bit, that's really nice and smooth, but I'm going to add a fill just to there. So this is the same color, but you can see as you layer the color, it gets darker. And also, even though I'm layering and layering and layering, the paper is not pilling, right? But it's starting to bleed through a little bit on that one. Not quite yet. So we're working slowly, but I'm going to go ahead and layer this last one. So three layers, two layers, one layer. You can get lots of layers with just one color. Another fill option is rather than using the chisel tip and um, kind of moving it back and forth to create a straight option or a straight line, you can move the brush pen in colored line or circular lines. Kind of overlapping them a little bit. So this is good for more organic shapes that you might need to be able to get into just that really, really fine line. Um, you can use a circular motion. And the reason that you would do this is that circular motion, it, it kind of has an um, innate layering, right? And as you layer these colors, they really start to, um, to fill in together and create a nice even layer. So you could tell as that pen dries and the the alcohol evaporates, leaving just the color. It's already a really nice layer. If we were to go ahead and add some more color, again, as that dries and as we layer, you can see that the, um, the color all evens out. Um, so these, these pens are used mostly for illustrations. I have seen some people letter with them, um, but for the most part, I would use these for adding um, adding illustrations to your lettering or just trying some kind of drawing or illustration. So for example, we'll use all of these pens and I'm going to draw a leaf. So let's start. I'm just going to draw a quick outline and then you'll see how the, th the different colors can work together and how to build, um, how to build an illustration with just, you know, a few pens uh, with the same color big one. So you could either start drawing just, you know, with a pencil or whatever you happen to have. I'm just going to start with my mono drawing pen because I really like them and I like them in conjunction with the dual brush pens and I use them a lot. All right, so this is my sad little attempt to add a fiddle league or excuse me, fiddle leaf fig. When you're creating blends with several different colors, you can think of it as two different ways. If you want to create a blend that is a smooth transition across a big space, I would start with, start with your darker color and use what's called a flicking motion. Flicking or feathering, I've heard it called both. But essentially, you just lay down a layer of color, 
you press down and then you kind of flick it or um, kind of pull up gently so that it leaves this, um, this feathered look. Start with your dark color, move to your second color, start at the same point and make your flicks a little longer. You'll see I'm moving too fast, so my color is not exactly even. You need to make sure you're working slow so that the ink has time to come out and um, lay down color. If you work too fast, you won't get nice even strokes. Then you go with your next lightest color and you add that. So as you can see, as the ink's drying, you can see a little bit of a difference between every line, but we're just layering and layering and layering that color to create a nice smooth grade. Okay, so now for our little, our little leaf. Um, so when you're creating gradients like this, I like to start with your dark ones, but when you're using it to fill in illustrations, I like to start with your lights. So I'm gonna start with P491, and I'm just gonna color in um, what will be my lightest areas. Um, and that just kind of marks it off. So you can see, even with this, with this light color, as I'm coloring over the mono drawing pen, it's not smearing the ink. Okay, now we take the next darkest color and add a little bit more. So I'm not being perfect in my um, application of this just because my style of illustration is a little bit more sketchy, but using these markers to color or to draw really gives you an opportunity to come up with your own style. Um, and as you practice with the markers, the more you practice with them, the more you will come into your own illustration style as well. So if you, when you go back with your darker colors, if you end up coloring completely over your lighter ones, that's okay too. Um, but it does give you the opportunity to have little light areas showing through your dark that you might not have had before. Okay, so once you have your first layer, all that's left to do is to go back with your lighter colors and fill in or blend any extra areas that you need to. So I'm going to skip my second darkest color and go back to my mid-tone and layer a little bit more on this one. I don't want to layer too much because I want to keep that definition. And then you can always go back and add more um, mono drawing pen over this as well. But you can see with just five pens, you can get quite a bit of variation between light and dark. All right, so that is the monochromatic pack or the blue pack. Um, there are also lots of other options for palettes as well as selling them individually. For the 12 packs, they come in these boxes and they have these nice little plastic trays that you could store and stack them on as well. So there's its own built-in horizontal storage for the ABT Pro. And that is it for the ABT Pro alcohol-based markers. Which means that that is also the end of my list of questions, I think. All right. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Grace. I feel like that was um, not just like a, a quick like interview, but like a master class. So <laughs> I know. Like, sorry. I got a little. <laughs> no, it was like above it and beyond, above and <laughs> beyond expectation. I feel like people will definitely benefit from that. And like, Wonderful. I, I don't even have any other questions. I feel like we talked about all the questions that people ever ask me about Tombow products. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad, so glad. Job done. So um, just before I let you go, where mm -hmm. can people find more from you and also, I guess, from Tombow because you write for Tombow and you do stuff like this for them too. So where I do. They, where, where's the best place for all of it? Yes, so most of my stuff shows up on Instagram right now. Um, my blog is not as active as it used to be. Hopefully one day it is again. Um, but I'm at Grace Ann yeah. Studio, and with an E. And um, also graceannstudio.com is my website. 
And then on Tombow, Tombow has its own blog, and that is blog.tombousa.com. Sorry, I always have to figure it out. Anyways, so I write for Tombow on them every other week. There's something from me on um, the blog as well as on Tombow USA Instagram page. But there's also my Instagram page at Gracie and Studio as well. Cool. Well, I think, like I said, like the answers were all in this video. So people can okay. come back to this anytime <laughs> they need it, but that's good, good to know where so. all there's going to be extra, extra information and where they can absolutely maybe even go and like bombard you with thank yous for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do. That'd be so fun. <laughs> okay, Grace. Well, thank you again so much for coming on and um, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Yeah. Sounds great. Thanks, Becca. Thanks for having me.